Hi, I'm Barry Sahasian, and this is Effective Bass Soloing Techniques number one, Bebop. So although we're looking at Bebop, it doesn't necessarily mean you want to become a jazz player. It means that the Bebop approaches and devices can work anywhere, whatever you're playing. So this is the beauty of it. It's just devices that were used in Bebop. And this series I'm producing is going to go through many different soloing techniques and ways of soloing. And it's great soloists these days to combine everything together. Bebop and uh, fusion and rock and, and it's just a blend of everything. That's the new world and that's what I embrace. So let me explain to you the first devices I learned of Bebop that really got me started. Basically, I guess I started with the chromatic approach from below. There's a famous blues lick that uses a chromatic approach to the third. Let me show you a little something you can do right away, I think. You must know... You must know an A triad. One, three, five, and then... One, three, five, up an octave. You can know that. Let's work with that. Let's put in a uh, chromatic approach to all of the chord tones. The one, three, five, and then octave three, five again. That's That could be part of a solo. That could be, uh, you know, a piece of your vocabulary. Uh, we can take it a little fancier and maybe play it as a triplet. I'll go down with it. I'm going to apply another rhythm to the chromatic approach from below to the chord tone. And it's similar to the one I just played with eighth notes. But what I do between each approach and the target chord tone is I put a rest like this. That would be the uh, chromatic approach to the root, and then I put an eighth rest in there, and then I do the same thing with the flat three to the three. Sounds like this in time. So I made it exactly two measures to keep it in meters, so if you're going to practice it, it's two measures, and it will fit where you want to put it in you know, in, in, in an even amount of beats per measure. Of course, you could do it from the high note to the low note, which is um, the third, the tenth, actually. Let me show you a couple of ways that the bebop has uh, played it. You know, we'll go back in jazz history a bit to maybe uh, Thelonious Monk. So he has a song called um, Well You Needn't. So in Well You Needn't, the first few notes of the song are actually just an F triad starting on the fifth. That would make it the second inversion. That's the line, but what he did when he composed the song is he put a half-step approach to the fifth. Now watch that, just that one note, which is, which is um, you know, dissonant, actually, because it's approaching, it's a flat five, actually, going to the five. See how jazzy that sounds? Just one note was added, just one approach note to a major triad from the second inversion. That one. Billy's Bounce. That's another one. That's a Charlie Parker tune. And um, he did the same thing a little bit. This one's actually an F as well. And what he did was start from the fifth of the, of the F triad. And he went five, flat five, five, and then root, flat three to three, another approach. See how jazzy that sounds? It's only a triad. And this is the whole idea 
of the simplicity of the bebop approaches. And once you see that you can play just half step approaches to a simple triad, and it's always going to be correct as long as you land on that, on that chord tone. So what we've done so far is only half of the equation of this particular bebop device. This bebop device is chromatic approach to a chord tone plus diatonic approach from above, which would be a scale tone approaching the above note. So chromatic from below, diatonic from above, and then you hit your target note, which is one of the chord tones. It's pretty much a whole step to the root and to the fifth. It's a whole step. But from the third, a diatonic note above the third would be the fourth. So it's only a half step away. So you have whole step to the root, whole step to the fifth, half step from the fourth to the third. And that is your diatonic approach from above. So I want to go into showing you some exercises and techniques of using the approach from above. Ultimately, what we need to do is to create lines that use above and below or below and above. As I said before, this is a very common device used in bebop and it's used in, in cliche lines going up and down the neck and within lines and within tunes. It's, it's really all over the place. But we're only interested in getting the essence of the technique and employing it the way we want to, whether you should pursue jazz or employ this in other forms of music and genres. So let's look at this. I guess an easy way and shape to use it is to from the from the second degree to the root, which would be a B to an A, and then fourth to the third, and then sixth to the fifth, and then second degree to the first degree, the root, and then, and then, you can keep going. Now that we've got that, playing it straight ahead just with sort of quarter notes, and I have notation is in quarter notes. like that. Let's put some rhythm to it so we can get ready to put, combine it with the lower approach in the, in the forthcoming examples I will show you. So let's use, I'm going to use that same rhythm I used with the half step approach from below putting the eighth rest in between the two notes, the approach and the target tone. <laughs> Now the thing about this is, when you play it in the opposite direction from high to low, all it winds up being is a scale. There is one note in the scale missing the seventh degree, but it still works, but it's not really as effective as going up. You can download all the notes, tabs, and play-alongs in different speeds on my Patreon page, and I could really appreciate the support. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. Hit the bell to be notified of all the videos yet to come. Like and comment. I thank you for stopping by and hope to see you again.